Good morning everybody, how are we doing? <laughs> Sorry about the uh, unshavenness by the way. Uh, I might scrub it, I don't know yet. Today I am getting in the battery compartment in the van, which is on the uh, passenger side, under the seat. Apparently, I'll find out when I unscrew these screws. Uh, I've been in consultation with a company called BSPK, which are hopefully going to supply my uh, B2B battery charger. And they want to know what the terminals look like. Uh, I assume they mean the vehicle one, but I'll send them a picture of the leisure battery as well. So we just need to get in here, and these are the screws that we've got in the Renault Master, and probably the Mavano as well. <laughs> and that was just the delivery of our new covers to go over the uh, windscreen and the side windows and the camp went away so nobody can see see in and hopefully it'll keep us warm as well we've got chief doggy did it this is the grand dog you've probably seen him before just waiting for him to get picked up off his mum and dad right let's get in this battery compartment Come on, how long is it? There we go. Yep, there's definitely a battery in that. So it's time to put the leisure battery in. Uh, I haven't got the B2B sorted yet, but it's fully charged and it would certainly keep us going for two or three days anyway. Because uh, we'd only be watching 12 watt TV and such. So this is going to go over here. I think I'll have the terminals on this side so it's easier to get at them. Just going to pop it right there. And I've got a bit of... Uh, bit of wood specially cut which will just fit in there and that'll keep that nice and tight I've got another bit of wood which is going to go there which will keep it in place nice and tight and I'm going to run I think a strap over the top of it as well uh, I think that's the way forward unless that needs to go on the floor I don't know now. <laughs> On the floor. No, oh, they're not big enough, are they? Need some bigger screws. Back them in. I need smaller screws now. <laughs> I do. They're too big now. There you go. Just the same on the other side. So actually it doesn't need a strap on because that battery can't go anywhere, I don't think. Nah, I would put a strap on. <laughs> oh well, uh, Mrs. Start connecting wires and things up now to the fuse box. When I put the fuse box in. So what I've got going on here is uh, we've got the battery fixed in position. I have a uh, oops, <laughs> that's not connected to that. I have a switch panel which is going to go up to the front here, and we have the fuse box which is going to fasten onto this board here using these which I got from Halfords the other day. So that'll connect up that way and then when the uh, battery to battery thing actually turns up when they reply to me that'll go in there next to that uh, so we should have plenty of room there so yeah let's get on with that then eh? right first job get this fastened on there We need a hoover, hoover girl. I'm a bit confused what this big orange thing in the sky is. Can anybody help me out? The seagulls are having a sing again. I'll just pop this on on here. I've 
I've lost the screws or come with it, so I'm having to use some 20 mil screws. So now it's a case of getting these connectors on and then fastening it up with these cables and then we'll have power. We will, we will indeed. But what I do need is, <laughs> thinking about it, there's a circuit breaker between this and the live so I can turn the power off. Mm. Yeah, better get one of them. Well, good morning, everybody. How are we all doing today? Yeah, good. Excellent. That's what I like to hear. Yeah. So, as you can see down there, I've got uh, fuse boxes to fit. I've got an isolator switch, which is going to go between the battery and the fuse box so we can turn that off. I have this switch panel, uh, or sockety switchy kind of fuse panel to go in somewhere. I want to work out how to do that. And uh, we've got leads to go in, which need cutting in half as well. Well, one of them does. And the connectors itself to go on the, uh, the main ledger battery. So yeah, let's get on with that. So this is what we've got at the moment. It's all just spread out on the floor and I'm just trying to work out where things are going to go. I think that's going to go there. So we'll have the, the wire will have to come from there down to there, cut in half into the box, up to there. Feed the live feud box to feed the fuse box when it's live. And of course a negative one, which will go from there to the top as well. So I've got the negative connector on and I've just fastened the negative wire to it. Well, I haven't fastened it yet, but, and that's going to lead along there and into the top of the fuse box. It's a half inch socket, but a, a nip, but it doesn't have to be too tight. It's pretty solid there. All right, so I'm not going to tie anything in as yet because things might change. So I'm just going to thread this one through from the negative into the negative on the fuse box. So it can move a little bit side to side, there's plenty of room there. The next job is to put the uh, positive connection on, which fits on the bottom of the fuse box there. Uh, trouble is, I don't want it to be live when I'm working on it, and I always want to be able to uh, isolate it, so turn it off, basically. So we do have one of these, which I'm going to have to put in the middle of the uh, red wire, which is the live wire. But we have these connectors in there, and I don't have any ring connectors big enough to go in there. So it looks like another trip to uh, either screw fix or tool station, or one of the uh, many electrical suppliers in the town, which are usually pretty helpful when I go in there. So yeah, another trip out. It's all more time, isn't it? So I'm just going to fasten in the bathroom light, which is that one up there above the toilet. I'm going to fasten that into the straight into the fuse box because it doesn't need to go into a switch anywhere because it's already got a switch on it. So I'm going into the negative, so negative straight into there screw it in there you go it's the first one on and the positive might as well go in the first one next to it into the positive part for the fuse box so this part's the negative part the buzz bar as they call it and this part is a positive side so once we get the power on connected up to these two then that will work there you go now the window light which is where is it <laughs> that one up there that uh, needs a switch on because it doesn't have a switch so that'll have to connect to uh to this so I need to uh, extend the cable on that because it's not quite long enough. I'm just leaving uh, some little stickers on just so I know what they are for now. There are some labels that can go on the front of them apparently. <laughs> so we know what's what. Every time I drop it, every time. 
So where's it gone? Here it is. So this one is the water pump, which also has a, well, it is a switch. So the tap is a switch itself. Make sure I get the right one. Negative. Sorry, positive. Give it a positive part. It's a bit fiddly, but nobody said it was going to be easy. In fact, everyone said it was going to be hard. <laughs> the wire misses. And it is. Right. I think I'll pop the next one on there. Right next to that one. Doesn't matter which one they go in, as long as it goes onto the negative. And again. Dropped it again. There you go. So I'm just going to crack on and put the rest on. If they uh, need a switch on, I'm going to put them onto the other thing, which will be connected to the front. And uh, yeah, let's just get on with it. How are you getting on? Fantastic. <laughs> How's your braces coming on? Poor Brenda was back at the uh, dentist again yesterday. That's why she's hiding from the videos mainly because she <laughs> hates her teeth at the moment. Because I've got big stupid braces on like a 16 year old. Georgie, <laughs> <laughs> cheeky. Cheeky chappy. Anyway, she's doing a good job. Painting the old. Uh... These are for the fronts of the bench seat. Now I've been watching a few YouTube uh, videos and had some advice as well. And uh, when I fit this in, so that'll be fitting into the front basically there. Uh, so we've got the switches which are going to be operating the ceiling light and anything else that I want putting on switches really. But when you wire it in, so you, you've got your live cable coming from whatever you're wiring in, so you see the, uh, the ceiling light. So that will go into the live, which is fused, and the negative has to go all the way back to the negative bar on your fuse box which is a bit mad because you're going to have wires all over the place. So what I have seen people doing is using the little uh, connector blocks. So you connect that from your negative feed, which goes onto the fuse box. And that goes in the middle of that, like that. You link all of these up. And then any negative that you've got coming from any of your feeds, just go into the other sides instead of going all the way back to the fuse box. I'll show you what I mean anyway. So what I've done here is I've taken the negative, which is coming from the fuse box over there, and I've put a connection block on and linked them all up together. And then from the other end, that will connect to the negative there. So that'll be supplying the negative part of the power to the five gang switch thing do that <laughs> so how you wire the back of this one up is all the switches there we've got the five switches and we've got all the lives so anything your ceiling lights you whatever you're going to power from this what you want to be able to turn on and off they will fasten onto there but then the earth part of it will go just into here instead of having to go all the way back to the fuse box. Right, I've got the isolator. Right, I've got the isolator switch in position now. I had to lift the board out because it was impossible to get the uh, the little nuts and bolts all fastened together through the back. Luckily, I've got enough spare wire going. So I'm just connecting this up to there now. Right, don't go too tight. Just, just a nip. Uh, I bet you the cover won't go on now because of that. Because I've got the wire too big. Let's try. You can always do some adjusting of the old cover. <laughs> right, it goes that away. it doesn't go on. Idiots! So I have the isolator switch connected to the live. 
and the negative is going to the negative so we have a switch there so technically when I switch this on all these ones with the fuses in with sorry all these ones that are connected up apparently these lights come on to tell you that they're connected but there's no fusing so let's have a go let's see what happens well one of them's lit up why haven't the others lit up I don't know I don't know maybe I'll put fuses in to see if the things actually work right that's the end of another day I've just run out of energy again I've got the fuse box sorted we've got quite a few things into the fuse box I've got the isolator switch which is switched on we've got the live going into the isolator switch and into the live we've got the earth going into the top into the earth and that's about as far as we've got today I had to uh, go and see my friend Andy Swan who helped me put some lugs on so they could fit inside there thanks Andy so this is what we've got done so far we'll start from this side here we'll go anti-clockwise for a change so we now have running off the leisure battery running water yay <laughs> we have where have we here we go we have the socket over here which is telling me i've got 12.7 volts and we've already seen us fit that one we've got the cigarette lighter and the doodah and this got a switch on so we can switch that off there and over here we have the the lights and such yep they're all working and the last one the bathroom light right that's it for today uh i'll get right that's it what am i saying <laughs> oh. <laughs> i forgot what i'm saying <laughs> right that's it for today i've totally run out of energy uh I'll get back on it tomorrow if I've got time when I fit this and then it'll be the electrics done until we get the B2B when that finally turns up all right see you tomorrow right I'm just cutting the hole out to fit the switchy panel -y thing in so I've measured out just the gaps between there and there don't go any further because these are very close to the end in fact you'll see I've drew a curve on as well which will uh, come round there hopefully it'll fit so I'm cutting it out back to front because I know when I cut with this that it leaves a raggy edge on the top but cleaner on the bottom so hopefully that's the way forward Right, it fits in now, but let's flip it over and see what it looks like on the other side. Well, Brenda won't be able to see from there because it's on this side. <laughs> there we go, it's on, but it's not straight. So, let's have a look. I need to little, cut a little bit more out to get this, this end up a bit. Right, just screwing it into position. Oh, it looks nice and neat and tidy. Oh, spiders and books everywhere, man. So you do get these little name plates which stick onto here so you know what the switches are actually for. But they're all, because it's uh, really aimed at a boat, you've got like blower, bilge pump, cabin lights, We've got cigarette socket, uh, running lights, steaming lights, so they're not really appropriate for what I need, but we'll sort something out. Yeah, bless us. <laughs> so that's what it's going to look like there. So it's underneath where we're going to sit. Now I do want to put a switch in, which is going to uh, turn this off because on the night time, these little blue LEDs, they really do light up the place and they stop you from getting to sleep. But we don't want a big ugly switch there. I could put it down the side there, or I could just put it on the inside, which means when we go into bed, we have to lift it up and then turn it up that way. So I haven't decided yet. All right, everything was going swimmingly until I decided to try and screw 
into a screw. And I've done the same at the bottom. Cock-a-doodle-doo, -do. what can you do? <laughs> so now I've got two holes in it. Right, so when you're doing this, have a little look behind before you drill into it and you'll see. Yeah. There's a bloody big screw there. So, <sighs> now what am I going to do? It's holes. Can I get it in on an angle? Will it go on an angle? And will it look crap? It has gone in on an angle, but it looks rubbish. Brenda gets a little bit of a tiny little paintbrush and paints around there. Probably be all right. Can I do the same on the bottom? Easier if you're just checking the first place, isn't it? Yeah, it's like measure, measure, check. <laughs> right, I've been and got the other drill because I'm sick of changing bits in the end. Pow, 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 pow. Right, let's do it. Get them on. Does it work? Oh, that sounds different. I've just acquired this one from my daughter. Because she didn't require it any longer. She bought a van, a sprinter, a couple of years ago. But they've given up on it, so they don't need the tools anymore. So, more for me. <laughs> right, just getting back to this uh, switch on the front here. I'm just trying to make this get this live so we've got the live from the main from the fuse box which is turned off and the live here so if I just put these together and the negative and the negative together then that would be live but it would be always live unless I turned it off there so what I'm gonna do is which I've already mentioned is put a switch in between the live and the live so on the night we can just turn that off and it stops all the glaring blue lights on the front. So that's what I'm doing now. I'm just wiring that up. So one side of the live goes in one end of the switch. We just tighten that up. Don't forget to thread it through the back or you'll be a fool. I, however, on this occasion, I'm not a fool. <laughs> oh. Oops. So you tighten it up nice and tight, but not too tight. Otherwise it can break through the wiring. So again, that's a little bit too long. I'm going to cut that down a bit. Oh yeah, it won't break when you want it to. Right, need another tool because that's completely rubbish. This one's better, but makes a mess. Like I said, probably took too much off now. <laughs> right, so that one goes in the other end of the switch. Nip it up. Wrong screwdriver, lad. Wrong screwdriver. So that goes in there, fastens on there like that. That'll fasten on there. And there's a switch whenever we want to turn that off. Right, let's get that fastened on. I might cut a little notch out there for the wires to come through. Good morning. It's the next day. Well, not a very good start of the day, as I've uh, just discovered. This thing hanging off. Oh well, don't know what to do about that. Where was I? Uh, oh, I know. I was going to fasten this switch on, wasn't I? That's right. Yep. Um, went to do the photos last night. It was quite interesting. Met some uh, lovely people from the Rotary Club in Hartlepool. Uh, some people were asking me what photography I'm doing. Well, a lot of it has been. I've been doing a lot of press work recently. That's one of my front page pictures from this week's paper. So yeah, that's what I normally do, but I do weddings and other stuff as well. Right, let's get on with it. I'm just going to fasten the uh, negative buzz bar to the uh, cabinet wall there, and then fasten the two ends of the negatives together. And as soon as I switch the isolator switch on at the fuse box, then we should have power to the front. Hmm, let's see. I appear to have lost all my strength this morning. There we go. Right, I'm just going to turn on the fuse box at the isolator switch. Now that is bringing power straight through to this switch, which is the isolator switch. Right, I think you can see from there, I've just got the switch here. 
the socket is on so let's turn this switch off and there you go it's isolating that switch box now perfect now what I have noticed is the voltmeter doesn't seem to be working so is the USB thing working it's not lit up hmm that's odd I wonder why so why isn't that working I don't know so I've plugged my phone into charge and that isn't charging either so obviously there's no power getting through to any of these uh, I wonder why <laughs> well I've had one of my senior moments again <laughs> I've been a complete and utter fool it didn't even have a fuse in the fuse box so no wonder it wasn't working but I'm still a little bit confused that it was uh, lighting up just a little bit uh, I don't understand that bit at all unless I was just imagining the lights being on anyway let's have a look at it now some of you brighter people may have noticed that there wasn't a fuse in at all anyway the isolator switch is on so we've got the wires coming all the way around to this switch to where so it's isolated from that switch so let's turn that on and see what happens there you go we have a voltmeter and everything the usb things lit up cigarette lighter doesn't light up but let's plug something in see if it goes and we now have lights in the ceiling that of course will be hardwired in to the back of the switch panel what a complete and utter clunker, but you know, it's these simple things that are sent to testers. And I didn't kick my toys out the uh, pram, you know, I just tried to work it out, and I did, and they got there in the end. So the wiring for the uh, ceiling light wasn't uh, quite long enough to reach the uh, switch panel, so I've joined them together, some nice jointy things, but I forgot to put the shrink wrap on. Now the shrink wrap is too big anywhere. So what I've had the idea of is I'll split it down the middle, wrap it round, like so. Is this a good idea? Will it actually shrink onto itself? Or is this a really stupid idea? And I should just use electrician's tape? Let's see what happens. I've got a lighter somewhere. think it is. Ow! Does appear to be working. It's a bit sooty. Ah oh, no, it's not working. Rubbish idea. Get some leggy tape on it. So now it's time to wire up the ceiling lights to the switch panel. And we are going to go from the first switch, which is this one. So that will be the live will be going into live, but the negative will be going into this negative buzz bar, which I uh, have fashioned after seeing somebody else do it on YouTube. Well, I can't remember his name, I'm sorry, but if it was you, thank you very much. So the negative is going to go into there. So let's do that one. Where's the screwdriver? There it be. There it be. Nice and tight, but not too tight, or it will cut through the wire. There you go. Next thing to do is to connect up the live to whichever switch you want to use. I'm going to use this one on the right. It's my arm being in the way of the camera all the time. So there you go, I've got the live, if you can see it. The live going into the live on the first part of the first switch. Sorry, I'm going to have to get her in the way. Now, I will be tidying all this up. So, there we go. Negative into the buzz bar, live into the live switch lead. Right, let's try it. So, we've got it switched on. <laughs> Again, I used to always think down was for on and up was for off, but there you go, it's the opposite way around. Anyway. We turn it off. Look at the lights above. I've switched it on and hey hey, hey presto. 
we have a working switch. Brilliant. Right, I'm just going to wire in the uh, window light now because that didn't come with the switch. It's the uh, one that come with the uh, the Max Air opening thing. It's not a fan, it's just the window, but it does have a light going around it, so I'll do that. So let's try the window light. Up for on, let's have a look. Yes, we have a light. Perfect. But I'll have to do. So there you have it. That's my 12 volt system for the van at the moment, as we have it. Of course, we haven't quite fitted the uh, B2B yet because we haven't got it yet. But this will do for now. We can just charge it before we set off. So we've got your 12 volt leisure battery, which goes to an isolating switch, which goes to a fuse box. Now connected to the fuse box, I've got everything, lights, taps, pumps, anything that's already got a switch on it anything that didn't have a switch on it comes to this switch panel which is also usb socket and a cigarette lighter as well which is also isolated with this switch here so to make it all go we turn on the isolating switch so the fuse box is now live so the lights of here work the taps and the pumps and everything works and everything else is down to this switch on the isolating switch and we have switches for the top lights and the window lights which you can see are on well i hope you enjoyed that video uh, but remember i'm not an electrician so if you're not sure please get somebody to do it it seems to be working for me and uh, I will be checking the fuses out properly and make sure I've got the right fuses in at the right place for the right implements and such. So if you've enjoyed it, please give us a thumbs up and uh, yeah, go and subscribe. That would be great. Really helps the channel along and makes it worthwhile doing the videos. And we will catch you next time. Bye bye now.